What have you got to celebrate? Maybe you stood on stage in front of everyone during the school play. That's some pick. Maybe you're celebrating the first snowfall. Or making a basket in PE. Yes! You could even celebrate a whole day without sibling arguments. Or helping dad finally get the Christmas lights untangled. God loves it when we celebrate, for real. In fact, God created celebration. God even outlined festivals and feasts for the Israelites to enjoy every year. And then God gave us the biggest reason ever to celebrate. Yes, you know it, Jesus. God's very own son was born as a helpless baby in a tiny town in the middle of nowhere. And when Jesus grew up, he showed us how to love God and love people in everything he did. And then Jesus gave up his life and was raised again so that we can live with God forever. So bring on the lights, the carols, and all the cookies. Christmas is the time to party because Christ the Savior is born. And as you celebrate God's greatest gift, Jesus, others can see God at work in you. That's why celebrating Christmas is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Hey, John.
What? I'm Brandon. I'm John, and welcome to the So and So Show. I, for one, could not be more excited that it's finally December, and as you can see all around us, Christmas has arrived at the So and So Show. Yeah, we both love Christmas so much, we like to get ready ahead of time. Decorations are up, cookies are made, Christmas feast is cooked. Whoa, whoa, we've still got like four weeks to go. You can't make a feast that early. Why not? Because it will go bad. We well, didn't see the mind last year. Huh. That was mold on the bread pudding? You said it was puffed blueberry topping. And of course, one of the best things to prepare ahead of time is Christmas presents! Oh yeah, <laughs> now that I can get on board with. I, I bought your present last week. Oh, I bought your present last month. Oh, really? I'm surprised I haven't found it yet. Oh, it's hidden really, 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 really good this year. It's behind the painting, isn't it? Okay, now it's hidden in a really, really, really hard place that you'll never find it. Mm. Yeah, please don't go looking for it! <laughs> please, no, it ruins my fun! Okay. You promise? Okay, fine. Uh, you promise? You know what, I just remembered, I need to go um, pick up some candy canes from the store, so, hey! Didn't you tell me you needed to get more Christmas lights? Uh, yeah. Great! Gonna... That's great. You do that. I'll get the candy canes. And then we'll uh, meet back here. Yeah. Sound good? Uh-huh. All right. Sure, I'm um, here. Uh, we're, we're leaving. I'm, yep, I'm gonna Together. go. Together. All right, goodbye. Bye. Every year, Brandon finds my gift for him early, but not this year. Oh no, 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 I'm prepared. You see, I was watching this Christmas movie the other night, Home Alone, yeah, maybe you've heard of it. Gave me an idea. If I can't trust Brandon not to look for his present, then I'll just have to prevent him in other ways from finding it. I might have to set a few traps, huh? You know, nothing too dangerous, but... <laughs> well, I guess I should go get more Christmas lights. <laughs> Oh boy, can't wait to get those lights. <laughs> He'll never even know. Oh dear Jonathan, where doth my present be hid?
I guess you didn't buy any candy canes? Eh. <laughs> it's Bible story time. <laughs> hey guys. Hey. You uh, got a little something on your head. You guys doing good? Yeah, just getting in the Christmas spirit over here. How about you? Oh, definitely. And to start us off this month, I thought it'd be good to take a look at a few of the promises God made long before Jesus was born. You see, God spoke through different prophets over the years. They told everyone about God's promises to send a savior to the world. And those promises gave God's people hope. Hope! I love hope. I ooze hope. I scramble up hope for breakfast, don't I, Greg? I'm Greg. That's right. And I'm Melv Solomon. Hit it! Glad you came. Glad you're here. I know it's getting late, but never fear. We'll give a blow-by-blow -blow of the Bible story on the Melv Solomon Story Recap. I'm Greg. Yes, yes, you said that already. Hey, tell us more about these hope promises and we'll give you the musical accompaniment they deserve. And you get a special today. The only tracks we'll be doing will be from our greatest hits Christmas album. <laughs> Works for me. Now, the first promise we're looking at today is written in the book of Micah, one of the Old Testament prophets. Micah wrote, the Lord says, Bethlehem, you might not be an important town in the nation of Judah, but out of you will come for me a ruler over Israel. His family line goes back to the early years of your nation. It goes all the way back to days of long ago. So Bethlehem's the key. Oh, I got just a tune for you, Greg. Let's give him a taste of track number 11 from the new album, shall we? There's the stuff. Bethlehem, you beautiful town Out of you will not come a clown I mean, I'm sure a few funny guys were born there too But that's not the point Michael was making Back to you! Keep those promises coming! Right, but yes, God was promising to send a ruler for Israel that would be born in Bethlehem And that's where Jesus was born hundreds of years later Now, God also made many promises through the prophet Isaiah Isaiah wrote, A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. He will rule over us and he will be called Wonderful Advisor and Mighty God. He will also be called Father Who Lives Forever and Prince Who Brings Peace. Ooh, Prince of Peace, that sounds really nice. Don't you agree, Greg? Greg. Greg! <laughs> Christmas candy ain't my stocking. <laughs> oh, no. We're talking about peace, Greg. Uh, peace! Oh, I'm Greg. Oh, brother-in-law. Is that all from Isaiah? <laughs> no, that's not all. God's promise kept going, saying there will be no limit to how great the Savior's authority is and that his peace will never end. He will rule over his kingdom forever. No limit? No end? Last forever? Oh, ho, ho. you know what song I'm thinking right now, don't you, Greg? <laughs> Hit it! What never runs out? What lasts forever? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's that sticky feeling in your teeth after you attempt to eat your great ex fruitcake. I'm still trying to get the raisins out of mine from last Christmas. You know what I'm saying? Mm, I'm 
just going to move along to another promise. God told Isaiah this, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin is going to have a baby. She will give birth to a son and he will be called Emmanuel. He will still be very young when he can decide between right and wrong. These promises just keep getting better and better. God sending a baby boy and they even know what to call him. What say you, Greg? I call him my pet squirrel, Churro. Ah, good old Churro. Now that furry little guy definitely knows right from wrong. Yeah, he only bites my fingers at nighttime. Ouch. At least he's consistent. Yeah. Just like God's promises. Oh. Uh, I don't know if I'd compare God's faithfulness to a pet squirrel, but you're right about one thing. When God makes a promise, God keeps that promise. You see, all these promises God made came true in Jesus. He was born in Bethlehem to a girl named Mary. He came bringing peace and he will rule forever. Emmanuel means God with us. And that's who Jesus is. God's promises gave the people hope for their future, that a savior would come and God would be with them. Ho, ho, ho! Now that's the stuff of symphonies right there. Hit it, Greg. God made many promises, it's true. He said he'd send a son to bring peace and to rule. Born in Bethlehem and called Emmanuel. Jesus is that savior king the prophets did foretell. Now I've got hope in my heart and peace in my mind because God is faithful all of the time. Yeah. Thank you, Melvin Gregg. Well done. Oh, thank you. Wow. That is amazing that God told the people what was going to happen long before it actually did. It's amazing that all those promises came to pass through Jesus. Yeah. It's true. God's people waited a long time for their Savior to come. And now every year at Christmas, we get to celebrate that Jesus came. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks for the great Bible story. You're welcome. See you next time. Yeah, see ya. You know, even though we aren't still waiting for Jesus to be born, it's a good reminder that God is faithful. Absolutely. I, I know there are things that I'm waiting for, and because God is faithful, I can have hope while I wait. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? You make me want to ask you more, but instead, I'll ask everyone. All right. Reveal the question! What are you hoping for? Oh, yeah, could be anything from hoping to make a new friend at school to hoping to do a good job on an upcoming test. Or hoping people like the Christmas gifts you bought for them and that they don't find them early. Uh, yeah. Whatever you're hoping for, remember God is faithful and is always with you. Share with each other and have a wonderful start to this Christmas season. I'm Brandon. I'm John. And this was the So-and-So Show. Yay. Woo. Merry Christmas. Oh, yeah. What's in the pudding? Is it a nut or is it fruit? I don't think it was in the recipe. What's in the pudding? Are we sure it's edible? Well, who cares? It tastes good enough for me. Also, the stock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs>